Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. It's Bowen. I'm a registered dietitian and homemaker. In today's video, I am just going to catch you up on some things that I am working on today and just working on in general. So I'm not going to go into a whole long story about this, but I do want to tell you that I've had a very strong conviction for the last two years to be more self-sufficient. And I may have said this before, but like I did grow up on a farm. Life brought us to the city for a very specific calling and specific reason. And this is where we are supposed to be right now. And I miss the country. And honestly, I didn't know how much I'd ever miss it until I was gone. And I don't want to like, I could so easily trail off into a really long story, but basically I am working really, really hard on self-sufficiency where I'm at, which is in the city. I'm really trying to learn skills that I actually did learn growing up. I learned how to can things. I learned how to sew. My parents had a garden. At the time, I didn't value that stuff. And I'm really, really, it hurts me to say that because I, now I'm just like, wow. I am so, so blessed that all three of my grandmothers knew how to sew, crochet, knit, all of that stuff. They quilted. I mean, they were all amazing seamstresses. My grandma, I remember my grandma having a garden. I, like I said, my, my parents always had a garden. We always had animals and cattle and horses and all that stuff growing up. But I was so focused on, you know, school and like academics and just a very different mindset at the time. And life takes you where you're supposed to go, right? But needless to say, like I and just really focused in on some of the things that I grew up with now and learning them better and be making them a part of my life. Making gardening a part of my life, canning, preserving, all of these things. And I feel like I am blossoming into a more responsible housewife and mother. And I'm just learning to take care of my family and think wisely about the future and those sorts of things. So that's the season I'm in. And that's kind of what this video is about. It's like, it's very random, all the things that I'm going to show you today, but that's what this season is about for me. So we got up, we went to the farmer's market, we got some really good deals on some meat, some tomatoes, and I'm going to can those things up this afternoon. And I'll show you everything in a minute. And then we went blueberry picking at a local farm and got as many blueberries as you can with a two-year-old. And then... Went to the thrift store. The thrift store blessed me today. I really feel like the thrift store is God's way of helping me get things I need or want in a way that I can afford. And I'm so grateful for it. So I found a lot of really cool stuff I'm going to show you. And I will probably bring the camera back out at the end of the day and just show you what I did in terms of canning and all that good stuff. I have been canning pickles like crazy. Well, I shouldn't say like crazy. I've been doing like a pint every few days, which I know is not efficient to can one at a time, but that's all my garden is putting out at a time. I just, I slice them really thin. They don't take very long to process when I do them in a water bath and then I can save the water and use it to water my garden the next day. So I don't feel like I'm being wasteful right now. I just, I'm, I'm learning and that's the truth. Like I canned pickles growing up, but I didn't grow them. I didn't get, you know, I didn't do the whole process. And so now I am and I'm learning so much and I love it. So let's, I'm going to stop blabbing around here and I'm going to take you and show you all of the cool stuff I found today. And then I'll bring the camera back out at the end of the day and show you hopefully all the things I can. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. All right. So these are my farmer's market finds. I got some onions. I got approximately 10 pounds of tomatoes, which I'm hoping to make ketchup. I've never done it. I don't know if this is enough tomatoes or not, so I'm gonna just kind of see how it goes. I'm someone who just has to dive in. I did not know I was gonna find tomatoes at the farmer's market today. I haven't seen them all season until today, and so it's kind of like, I was like, oh, should I do it? Should I not do it? I don't know what I'm doing. And then I was like, I'm just gonna get 10 pounds of tomatoes and figure it out as I go. <laughs> So then I got some shishudo peppers, which we're going to use for a Father's Day meal. The blueberries we picked. I got 
five pounds of ground beef. It was a great price, $4.50 a pound, which is so good for local grass-fed, mostly grass-fed beef. So I'm going to can that up as well in the pressure canner. I got a small steak for $10 a pound, which was also a good deal. Father's Day, Father's Day gift for my husband. And then I got a beef heart. So beef heart is really inexpensive. It's $3 a pound. If you've never tried it, I highly recommend it because it's like eating meat. It's, it's a muscle. It doesn't really have a organ type flavor in my opinion. So um, I have a whole video on how to process and how to cook beef heart. I'll link it down below and I'll put it in at the top of the screen as well. It will save you money because it's only $3 a pound, which is cheaper than a lot of other things, and it will help you stretch your dollars. And then some of the excess stuff that kind of comes off of it, I cook it up and give it to the dog. So that's what I do with that, and I love getting those. It's a lot to process, but you can do it. I also got a bag of patty pan squash. I love these so much. Um, I wish I could grow these maybe one day. So I will do something with those. And then I also got some loofahs. I was so excited to find those. And they gave me some loofah seeds for free actually. So that is my farmer's market finds for the day. I'm super excited. Oh, I also got these, which I'm gonna plant. I don't know what type of onions they are. I forgot to ask. But I was looking through one of my gardening books last night and I remember seeing a picture of these in there. I think these are the ones that makes the big flowers. So I'm going to plant those soon. They said I could plant them now. So we'll try it. The thrift store was so good to me today. I, I'm just so thankful. I have been looking for one of these for forever. And for whatever reason, they're hard to find. I only have one and I don't have one that stands up like this. I just have like a sheet. And I've been wanting another one of these because one's always dirty and like we use so much cheese, I need more than one of these. So I got that for three bucks. It's solid and I really like it, I'm excited. I also got this stainless, I think this is stainless steel, um, colander, do you say colander or colander? I'll be honest, I'm not the best with spelling and pronunciation is probably my weakest thing in the world. Anyway, um, I got one of these because I only have one and again, I'm doing a lot of more preserving and a lot more stuff like that and I just wanted to have another one. You can never have enough of these. Two bucks, it's just a nice little jar. I can use it for seeds, I can use it for so many things. Um, these gaskets that they come with, like sometimes they get old and sticky. You can get new of these, so as long as the jar is in good condition, you can still get a gasket and it's a nice airtight container. Okay, did I need this? No. Did I buy it? Yes. I can live without this. Seven dollars. So I have a Pampered Chef stoneware pan that I love. I love it. I use it every single day. Almost every single day. And I found this bread crock and it's stone and you bake bread in it. And I've never heard of this and it has recipes. It just called my name and I'm just going to try it out and see what I can come up with. And it's literally never been used has the instructions with it so it came in the box the original box it was seven dollars i saw it and i was like yep we're going for it so who knows it'll make really cute small loops of bread which will be kind of fun for if you're having guests over you want to do something different i thought it would be cool i found this reader's digest 1001 hints and tips for your garden and i have if I'm being honest, I have quite the collection going of books. I got a whole huge haul of books on Facebook Marketplace, all related to gardening, self-sufficiency, farming, homesteading, all that stuff for like $20. And I got like seven of them or something like that. So I probably could have done without this one, but I was looking through it and it just had a lot of really good info on like how to um, trim things, how to prune things, which is something I've been wanting to learn. I've just been kind of doing it and figuring out as I go, but I would like to have a reference. So I went ahead and got it because it was only like two dollars and it has a lot more than just vegetables. It also has flowers and things like that, which I also enjoy growing as you can see. So I got a gardening book. So I found this 
awesome linen shirt. It's 100% linen. Um, it's linen, pure Jill brand. I don't know. It's like one of those boxy, just really cute. It was so nice. So it was $7. Look at this skirt. I have been wanting a denim skirt and this one is perfect. I think it's a high-waisted one. It is just so classic. $5. $5. And it has pockets in the front and the back. Buttons down the front. I'm pretty sure, like I said, it's high-waisted. So I am stoked about this. I also found some overalls, which I'm really excited about. I have a pair of overalls. They're Walmart brand. And they were my mom's. And she gave them to me. And I love them. I wear them all the time for gardening. But they are getting... They're very dirty and very worn. So they're mainly for gardening. I can't wear them out or anything like that. I'm in a good. But they're really dirty. So this is like if I want to wear overalls out and about, um, I can wear these. They were also $5. Um, and if I, you know, don't like the way they look or something, I'll just use them for gardening. So that was exciting as well. These are Restoration Hardware. Very, very nice cotton Euro shams. So I'll be totally honest, like I'm not a huge fan of how they look. Um, I don't like the stripe thing on the edge and I feel like they're going to have like a standout border, which I'm not super thrilled about, but they are like in perfect condition. They're cotton and they've never been used. <laughs> so I went ahead and got them anyway. I'm just going to make do with them because we really need new Euro sham covers. We have some that are just, they are so old. They're six years old. They're fading. They have, they just look really bad <laughs> if I'm being honest. So these are great. $3 each. I went ahead and got them. They just feel good. Um, take my word for it. They're amazing. And so we're going to have those and they'll be really cozy. Okay, here's another thing I did not do. <laughs> but I literally saw this and I was like, this is for me. Like, this is mine. Thank you. <laughs> it was also $3. I wish I would have found it before our beach trip because that would have been awesome. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It's like a, it's one side is like this, you know, whatever this is, that poly, P-U-L stuff. And then the other side is like a, probably a, I don't think that's cotton. Maybe a cotton blend. Anyway, it's like a picnic or beach blanket and it's groovy and it's so pretty. And so I had to buy it because I felt like it was me and it was $3 and you never know when you want to set out a blanket on the grass and now we have one. We didn't have one before. So, okay. Another thing that I really like to get at the thrift store is movies and DVDs. I have probably bought 20 different DVDs at the thrift store and only one has ever been defective and, and scratched or whatever. The rest of them have always worked just fine. And you can just get really good movies for cheap. I mean, just renting a movie is usually four or five bucks and you can buy one for a dollar or two. So, you know, you can buy it. And if you don't want the clutter in your house, you can take it back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That is the thrift haul today. It just is like a summer haul and I love it. So yeah, I'm really grateful. Now I'm going to go get to work. I have to, my toddler is down for a nap and I have to get to work. So I'm going to go get all the jars sanitizing, get my recipe books out and figure out what I'm going to do with those tomatoes. I have enough pickles to do a pint of pickles. I'm going to do those today. I'm going to do hopefully ketchup, but we'll see what I end up doing. <laughs> I hear ketchup and spaghetti sauce is very labor intensive, so I may chicken out, but hopefully not. Yeah, so it's time to get busy. I will catch you in a little bit after I do some work. So it has been several days since I filmed the first part of this clip telling you that I'm going to go can, pressure can some stuff. I did do that. I'm going to show you that at the end of this video, but I thought I would insert a dose of reality. <laughs> Look at my beautiful kitchen. <laughs> um, so in between all of the, you know, pretty stuff, this is 
this is what it looks like um, a lot of the time because I'm always cooking. Yesterday I made two huge batches of bone broth, which I'm going to can today. I made three dozen muffins. I made about two dozen beef heart meatballs. And then we canned pickles at the end of the night. And I just was done for the day. And sometimes, I don't like leaving my kitchen like this at night and I don't do it very often, but sometimes I put myself before this. And if I come in here and wash dishes at night, I'll wake myself back up and then I won't sleep well or it'll take me forever to go to sleep. So sometimes I leave my kitchen like this and I wanted to tell you that. So um, this is the product of working a lot and doing a lot in the kitchen. And then I have books open um, and I have my laptop because I had to renew my license yesterday as a dietitian. And then I also was looking up recipes for making soap. And I have a bunch of like homesteading, self-sufficiency type books. And so I just looked through all of them to find recipes and tips. And so I'm gearing up to do that, so. That is what's going on. I'm about to clean this up, and once it's clean, I will get the bone broth started with the pressure canner, and I might show you a few little clips of me doing that, but then I will just kind of recap this whole video and show you all the canned goods I've made in the last few days. So, time to, uh, <laughs> that's my little um, three foot, co-worker banging around in there so anyway it's time to get to work um it's about 7 30 in the morning we've already took taken care of the garden and done all that so now it's time to start the work inside okay so i'm about to can up my bone broth this is not a tutorial i'm not showing you how to do this <laughs> this is only my third time pressure canning but i thought i would just show you you know the general gist of it and all of that so I made bone broth I chilled it and I'm gonna skim all the fat off I'll save the fat for cooking um, I'm just taking the fat off because I feel like there's quite a bit of fat in this and <laughs> so I have the all-american pressure canner and I was very intimidated but once I did it a couple of times it was like wow I don't know why I was so afraid of this slash feeling like I couldn't do it, but it's really not hard. And I'm so excited to continue canning and just see where it takes me. So I am about to get started and I will show you everything I've canned after I finish canning this broth. So I'm getting it ready to start pressure canning. We're trying to get up to pressure for some purging the air out and doing that step. So, but I wanted to come on here and tell you what books I have found really helpful to learn the process of pressure canning. So one is obviously just the good old manual for the pressure canner. But if you want to learn a lot of the principles of it, like the science behind it and all of the work that the USDA has done to research the process of canning, it's a very unbiased type of research because this is it is what it is. They're testing these processes to, to ensure that they are as safe as possible. So um, I really, really like this book. I think you can get it free online, but it's like $15 um, to buy. And I went ahead and bought a copy and it just gives you a lot of the good basic principles um, and understanding the basics of canning. I am though using this book to with for recipes. I mean, the USDA book has recipes, but her recipes are a lot more creative and interesting and good. I'm using recipes out of this book. I'll link those below if you want to get them for yourself or get a link to them. So getting ready to get started with this. So I should be done really soon and I will be able to give y'all a recap and close out the video. So came to seven pints of bone broth and it looks like everything's sealed. I don't usually mess with it until it's been 12 hours of it sitting undisturbed. So I will check everything tonight and then put it in my cupboard. And then this is also the pickles we did yesterday and those did seal the little, there's like a raised area here that usually flattens out or kind of goes inward when it's sealed. Um, but I'm also gonna do the sound test in a minute. 
Let me take you over to my cupboard and show you what I canned a few days ago. Okay, so this is just like, this is such a dream. I This is my favorite piece of furniture of all time. It was a gift and I love it. It's an old, really old piece. It's not made to look old, it is old. So it I treasure it so much. Anyway, when I got it, my dream was to see it filled up with jars that I canned, and we are well on our way to that, and I'm just so excited. So these are the pickles we've canned so far. This is what I ended up making with my farmer's market finds. So I made a chunky tomato sauce, like for spaghetti. So it has ground beef and tomatoes that I peeled and pureed and all that stuff. I ended up making four quarts and, or sorry, four pints and two quarts. Um, I kind of wish I would have just did all pints just for aesthetic reasons or all quarts, but I didn't, you know, I was still figuring out what I was doing. So that was a recipe from Angie's book and we have tried it, not from a can, but we had, we saved some fresh and it was really, really good. So we're excited to pop these open and it's just like I have ready-made meals on my shelf and it's so cool. All of these sealed properly and so I'm excited. So anyway, this is my little pantry. I just, I love this little pantry. This is garlic from my garden that I cured. I don't have that much of it this year, but hopefully next year I will plant a lot more. These are some of the books I was telling you about that I got. Not all of them are here. You can see I took some out all ago, but I got a lot of really cool books from Facebook Marketplace for a really great deal. And then I've also been throughout the summer dehydrating herbs as I can harvest them. So I have all of this basil so far. I have some rosemary and I have some dill. I've been using the dehydrator. I really want to set up a space where I can dehydrate it just with the air and not the dehydrator and the heat just to preserve more nutrients. But I don't really have a great set up for that yet so hopefully soon I will work on that but that is what I'm doing so I'm gonna add the broth here and hopefully my garden I am really really praying for lots of okra I love okra so much and I love pickled okra and it is like our goal to have a jar of pickled okra every week for the rest of the year from our garden so I don't think that's possible this year because of the amount of plants we have but We'll see, we're, we're on our way, so I'm just so excited. All right, y'all, well, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something. As always, stay encouraged that it takes time to learn all of these things and we can do it. If our grandmas did it, we can do it too. And I was thinking about that the other day and I was like, wait, my grandma was not a grandma when she was doing these things. I mean, she did them as a grandma, but she learned them as someone my age. So I was like, we can do this. We can, we can take it back. We can cook more from home. We can do these things. It's just all about integrating it into our lives. Of course, if you want to, this isn't everyone's calling. This isn't everyone's desire, but if it is your desire, stay on the path. You got this. I'll see you in the next video for my kitchen to yours. I wish you the best of health for years to come.